loved hearing that because that person who's got a room full of ribbons and pro trophies is generally the person who knows, oftentimes anyway, the person who knows the least about the horse. They may have the ribbons and trophies, but they don't know much about the horse they're riding. So if an issue comes up that's a behavioral issue, they'll frequently call in somebody from the outside or simply just get rid of that horse and get another horse. And then the problems, the issues start all over again. So part of my mission has become to teach horse, not just about riding horses. Um, I, I teach horsemanship as a life enrichment experience. Because if I can get somebody very successful with a horse, chances are they're going to be more, uh, more compassionate, they might be kinder, they'll be a better communicator, become a better leader, become a better partner, become a better parent. Because people who are great with horses are often like Robert Redford's character in the Horse Whisperer movie, who was the great guy. He was the iconic man, Robert Redford in the horse. Of course, he was Robert Redford. That didn't hurt. But, um, but he was just the great guy. If he, all of you saw the movie, right? The Horse Whisperer? OK. Um, so my intention in what I do in my life is to inspire and uplift and support people in becoming better through self-awareness more self-knowledge, and they do that by becoming successful with the horse. Because these guys are as innocent as babies. Yeah, they can hurt you, no question about it. But to say, I hear all the time, my horse is being naughty today. He's a naughty boy. How many times have you heard that? People say it all the time. Somebody says that it's, they don't really know so much about the horse. They want to blame the horse. They want to make it the horse's fault that it's naughty. It's like a child who's got his hand in the cookie jar too much. He's being naughty. The problem with that is these animals are not naughty. If there's behavior in a horse that you don't want, which you could call resistance to a request, is because they're afraid of something. It's all fear-based. Any behavior you don't want from a horse is all fear-based. If he's in pain, he's afraid of being in pain. He's afraid of the pain. If you confuse him, if you don't know what you want from the horse, and you ask him in such a way that confuses him, that makes him afraid. If you're afraid, he's afraid. If you're too timid, he's afraid. If you're overbearing, he's afraid. If you're anything other than pretty close to right on in your communication, he's going to get afraid because what he's used to is a good leader. He's used to having another horse be his leader in the wild horse herd. It's a head mare. Of course, it's that way in most places. The female is really leading the group, no matter what the men want to think about it. But um, so... Becoming a good leader for a horse gives practice in many good uh, qualities. It helps us to become more compassionate, kinder, generous, forgiving, really good one. Less judgmental, another really good one. Because it's like saying the horse is naughty and bad, we're judging him. Anytime you judge something, you're putting yourself way up here, and whoever it is you're judging is way down here. And that's going to set up conflict within you. Make your ego might love it, but basically it's going to set up conflict. My goal, because I had a dysfunctional family I grew up in, was for inner peace. I always wanted to find some place where I could be peaceful inside, because it sure wasn't what I was experiencing on the outside. I was very lucky. I discovered horses at a young age, thanks to my father. And through the interaction with the horses, I found my own sense of inner peace. And I found that I had the knack for helping the horse to feel safe with me. My dad was a polo player. I grew up doing that. And I used to be a hot walker. And these horses would come off the playing field, and they'd be all pumped up. They're mostly thoroughbred horses, and I'd have four horses. I was like 10 years old. I'd have four horses out on each side, riding a fifth, uh, another horse, 
and hot walking them on, they all calm down in just a couple of minutes. You notice that if you watch me at all with these other horses and Carolyn, thank you, Carolyn, when these horses came over to us, we didn't start to touch their faces. But everybody wants to pet a horse's nose, and it always just makes me a little nuts. Because you better not touch my nose unless I invite you to touch it. Otherwise, I might bite your hand. Okay? And what I see a lot, we're not touching the nose of the horse for the horse. We're doing it because we want to do it. Because it's such a soft thing. Everybody wants to pet their face. It's rude and disrespectful. Your face is your personal space. And your body is your personal space. Nobody better touch it unless you invite them to touch it. But what we do all the time is we walk into a horse's personal space and we touch them in the face and we put this equipment on and we lead them around and we saddle them up and expect them to perform and do things for us. We don't ask them. We don't ask permission to do that. We just do it. We assume they should. We treat horses much like well-kept slaves. Okay? They're, they live in cells. A stall is a cell. You know? Have a little more compassion. To help them have some sort of a choice. Hello, buddy. Now, I don't like restraints. Okay? Restraints are like ropes and halters and martingales and tie-downs and things like that. Um, I want to try to give a horse as much freedom as I can. And I'll show you how I do that. Well, since he's already with you, why don't you go ahead, please. It's a naughty one. <laughs> a halter a whip, spurs, a twitch, crops, bridles, all these things that we use with horses are tools, just like a hammer. A tool is only as good as the person is using it. So people will come to me and say, oh, I never I would never wear spurs on a horse. That's just inhumane. Or they'd never use a twitch on a horse. It's a torture tool. Or, you know, never use a crop with a horse or something like that because it's, it's cruel. But what's cruel is the human that's using it. What's cruel are the hands that are using it. By themselves, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just tools. So if we're going to use a tool, thank you, Carolyn. Thank you so much. She's not going far. See that? See that? Now that's a bond. Hello? Thank you. Could you come here, please? Come on. Come on over here. Come on. Come on. Come on around. Come on. Come on. He wants to go right to that step, I think. Come here. Come here. A lot of people, you see them, when they're leading horses around, they're like this. They've got that a death grip on the horse's rope. It's like having them like this. Okay? But I'd rather invite the horse to do something, and I want him to do it on a slack line. Good boy. Good boy. And I'm not going to touch his face. In fact, I'm not going to touch him much at all. Come on. Come on. Ooh. If I want him to stop, I'll just jiggle the rope and say, whoa, and stop. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come on around. Ooh. Good boy. You step back up. Wow. This is nice. You've been playing with him. Yeah. He's light. He's really light. Nice light touch. I like that on a horse. So what I encourage people to do and show them how to do it is to have a light touch. It's nice to go through life with a light touch. I like the concept of it. Okay? Something else that Carolyn and I both do is what you call equine assisted or equine facilitated uh, learning. And there's a lot of words for the same thing. The work that I do doesn't generally involve riding. It's, I do a lot with learning disabled children or children with a learning disability. 
I do a lot with tough teens, kids on the street, kids that are already in the penal systems. Um, I do leadership team building programs using the modality of equine facilitated learning. Of course, the CEOs are the tough ones. They're really the tough buggers to get through. Um, but it's all based around success with the horse as life enrichment. Okay? I have no problem with people doing competitions, but competition often is too much of an ego build. And they're not partnering with the horse. They're out there just, you know, if you see certain dressage riders, you know, it's really like that. And I have a problem with that. So lightness, light touch, lighten up, all those things are where I'm trying to go with it. Come here, buddy. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Light touch. So what we're going to do over the next few days here is we're going to have an equine facilitated learning plan. Move down here a little bit. Come here, photo. You know, look into the sun. Is that a little better? Good. And um, I'll be working with uh, children, some children. I'll be working with some adults, different horses. And the thing about the equine assisted programs, what's missing in a lot of them and what's missing in a lot of the RDA, Riding for the Disabled, and I've done a lot of work at RDA centers, the problem there is there's no horsemanship. You know, they put a disabled child on a horse and the, there's a volunteer leading the horse who doesn't know anything about horses. He has no connection with the horse he's leading. There's two sidewalkers. So the horse is hemmed in with somebody in front, two people on the back, and an out-of-balance rider on, on his back. So they wonder why they get a nice horse in that's donated to that RDA center. And in two weeks' time, that horse is getting sour. He's biting. He's balking. He doesn't want to do it, blah, blah, blah. So... All equine assisted anything, riding for the disabled or whatever, involves or should involve excellent horsemanship. And this is a real problem throughout. For those of you who are involved in RDA or any equine assisted programs, I want to partner with the horse and I want to get that child or that CEO or whoever it is in there with me to partner with the horse and not objectify the horse and use him like a living Rorschach ink blot test. So I'm passionate about it and I'm a little irate about some of the exercises that I see. I like to ask the animal to do something. The people say, well, the horse in the egalitarian, well, he can walk away. He doesn't have to participate, but I don't buy that, really. The horse is confined somewhere, and the other horses are there, and nine times out of ten, that horse is going to be near the other horses. I really don't think it's fair to say that, well, he could just walk away and not participate. I don't think that's understanding the natural behavior of the horse. So, uh, so that's going to be part of this. The natural behavior of the horse. You go to be with horses at a public place, it's all about riding. You're going to get riding lessons. You're going to learn how to ride, but you're not going to learn anything about horses. God bless the BHS. If you look at the BHS manual, it shows you how to saddle, how to groom, how to feed, maintenance, 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 and some riding, but it doesn't tell you anything about horses. I have a problem with that. I really do. I, it just makes me nuts. Um, I know BHS riding instructors, many of them, that know very little about horses. They're good riders. They might be able to teach riding okay, but if that student starts asking them, what's the psychology of this animal? What's important to the animal? What's he looking for? They kind of look like, well, what do you care? Why don't you get on and ride? You know, what do you care about? Are you going to marry the horse or something? Just get on and ride them. But this is just, I see this all the time. It makes me a little nuts. The most important thing to a horse, folks, you probably know this. Many of you do, especially if you saw me before. Our feelings of safety. Safety does not exist out in the outside world. One airplane or automobile is generally no safer than another. It's whether or not you feel 
safe enough to get on the airplane. So it's a feeling. So for him, it's the same thing. He either feels safe enough or he doesn't. Safety equals peace. They're interchangeable for a horse. If he's feeling peaceful, he's feeling safe. If he's feeling safe, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Now, I just provided a reprimand for that because I wasn't paying him enough attention, so he gave me a little uh, on my hand. So I, I gave him what I call a consequence. I didn't punish him. I could have slapped him in the mouth. I could have given him a pop with a rope or something like that, but I didn't want to do that. It wasn't that big a deal. So, but I backed him up. Movement is a great consequence for behavior you don't want, especially if it's not particularly dangerous or bad behavior. Move the horse. Get him to move his feet, because all movement is work. So it's a great thing to provide for a horse for behavior you don't want. Good boy. And then just stay right there. Something else that's really good are boundaries. If a horse is too close to you, who was we, we were talking, you don't want a horse too close to you. Do you want to see how to set a boundary? Come on in here, if you don't mind, if you would. Please tell me your name again. I'm so sorry. Dora? Spell that. Cora. Dora. Dora. Thank you, Dora. I'm sorry. My hearing is, is, you know, really weird. So, okay, would you take this rope, please? Okay, now what I'd like you to do is you're going to invite Photo to come towards you. Okay, when he comes close enough, in fact, let's give you, let's back up a little bit more. Okay. As he comes to you, I want you to gather the rope. And when he comes to the spot that you don't want him to go any further, so let's just say for arbitrarily, there's that line. Okay? I want you to take the rope, whatever's remaining there, and I want you to shake it and say, whoa. That's right. Bring him. Bring him in. Stop it when you want. Bigger. Okay, you can got him to back up. Okay, good. So now you're going to become the good leader. Okay? Okay? You stay in here with me a little bit more. You okay to do that? Okay. Okay. I, I'll stay right with you. I'll stay right with you. I want you to invite him to come with you. Say, come on, photo, and just start walking this way. Don't shake the rope. Just bring, just come. Good. Now you're going to stop him just by shake the rope a little and say, whoa. Okay. Wow. So now she's, she's figured out how to set a boundary with this horse to invite him to come with her. And if you shake that a little more and say, back up, he's going to back up. Try it. Jiggle. Say, back up, back up, back up. Okay, good. Now what you could do is go to his shoulder and pet him. Tell him he's a good boy. See, you can keep his mouth away from you, too, just by raising your hand and shake the rope a little at him. See? That's how you set boundaries. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I'd like to, to touch your back. Is that okay with you? Okay. How does this feel? Good girl. You did a really good job. Or how does this feel? You did a really fine job. Thank you very much. Okay? People go up to horses. Oh, good boy. That's the Olympic rider. After a full, beautiful round, the guy's banging the crap out of the horse. Makes me crazy. Doesn't it make you nuts to see that? So, yes. I touch horses like I want to be touched. If, it, if they'll like it, I'll like it. Nine times out of ten. If they wouldn't like it, I wouldn't like it. Nine times out of ten. That's just how I teach this, okay? The golden rule, you did really good. Very good. So you feel a little better about it all now? Bravo. Bravo, as they say in Greece. Bravo, bravo. Everybody says that. Most people, they're going to use some sort of a tool like a wand. I don't call things whips anymore. I call them wands. Since Harry Potter came around, you know, I want everything to be a wand.
So, come on, come on, come on. If a horse doesn't want to walk straight ahead, just go off at an angle. If he's it's just start going at an angle. Chances are he'll unlock and you can, can go anywhere you want with him. I'm going to do something called lunging, which most of you know what that is. I'm going to just ask this horse to go around in a circle a little bit. I look at all movement that I would do with a horse as a dance. It's like a ballroom dance, okay? He knows the steps. He's a professional dancer straight away. He knows everything that I would ask him to do already. It's up to me to learn the dance, and it's up to me to learn how to be the leader of the dance. I want to lead every instant I'm with him, because he wants the leader. He wants a leader that he can trust. He wants a leader who understands him, and who is consistent and kind and compassionate, and a good communicator. That's what he's looking for. That's what he has in the wild, and that's what he's looking for for me. So that's my job. Every instant I'm with him is to be trustworthy, to be consistent, be clear, to be precise, to understand that his way of communication is primarily through the body. They don't make a lot of noise in the wild because then a lion will know where they are. So his primary mode of communication is through his body. Almost everything he does with his body says something. It's very helpful to know how to read a horse's communications. So I need to be self-aware. Wow, what a concept. Be self-aware as much as you possibly can of how you are moving and how your energy is and how you are feeling when you are around a horse. Because they know everything. You cannot keep any secrets from a horse, whether you think you can or not. They have great uh, antennas to know what you're about. They need to know that as part of their survival mechanism. They need to know if you want to eat him for dinner. Are you just trying to control him? Are you trying to capture him? They need to know all these things. Is your agenda, well, I just got 20 minutes, I got to get him on, a, get a saddle on him, get in, ride, work, work, I got to go take the kids to soccer, blah, blah, blah. He knows it. He knows it. Anyway, I'm going to lunge him a little bit, I hope. We'll see what that looks like. Come here. Come on. Come on. You know, really, good horsemanship doesn't have to be fancy. Good horsemanship doesn't have to be, oh, wow. But good horsemanship can be very good, very simple, basic moves that you can ask your horse to do, and he does it, and he does it smoothly and effortlessly and seamlessly with making good transitions of speed and direction in a calm, quiet, smooth way. That, to me, is just as good horsemanship, if not better, than some of what I see in the show ring, which makes me not feel so good. Good boy. Good boy. Now, I don't need him to run around. People lunge horses, they get in there and they want that horse to run around right away. Well, I don't really want him to run around right away. I want him to walk around in a nice way. He's not afraid. And once he gets used to going around walking a little bit, then I can ask him for a little bit more. Go on. Go on. Good boy. Come on. You see how easy it is to scare him a little bit? Just make a little funny noise. But he'll get used to it. If I don't go over the top with it, make a big deal out of it, then it's not a big deal. For horses, things are only a big deal if you make them a big deal. If something's a big deal to you, it's a big deal to him. For instance, if you're riding your horse and you see something in the road that's a little different or potentially scary for the horse, and if you get afraid, the horse is going to get afraid. But if you see that plastic bag or whatever it is that's in the road, and you don't make a big deal out of it, chances are the horse won't either. The things aren't a big deal unless you make them a big deal. Ooh. Good boy. Want to go that way? 
That's fine. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Now, I'm not doing anything really fancy here. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm not trying to woo. Ooh. I'm not trying to entertain you. I'm just trying to show you what simple, basic, smooth, hopefully, efficient, quiet, effective horsemanship looks like and what it feels like. Okay? Yeah, it's exciting to ride horses. I love to ride horses. I particularly like riding reining horses and training reining horses. It's a very exciting event to ride reining horses, let me tell you. Yeah, you're going to get excited and your adrenaline's going to run, but I tell you, the, an athlete, the guy who wins the race of hurdles, running like mad for 50 yards or whatever and doing hurdles, is the guy can have an inner calm. He's running like mad. He's the fastest one out there, but inside there's a calm. There's a kind of inner peace that prevails. That's the guy that's going to win the race. He's the one that's going to run the fastest. Not the, the guy who's just oh, like that. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let's go. Good boy. What a good guy. Good boy. He's getting better at it. Not bad at all. Good boy. Whoa. Thank you. Walk. <laughs> Try. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Okay. Good boy. I don't need him to run around and canter over and blah, blah, blah. But part of what I'll do with the children sometimes is I'll have a five-year-old child. Maybe he's got some sort of a learning disability or something like that. I teach him to do this. Can you imagine what it's like for a little child who knows he's different? He knows he's not like all the other kids who can do things that he can't do. And all of a sudden, he's got a big horse in hand, and that horse is jumping over fences for him. Imagine what his self-esteem uh, develops and how his confidence develops. This is wonderful stuff, truly. The last time I was here, we had Frodo made a step. Now, this step's not nearly as tall as the other one was. That, was, that one was pretty good size. Well, it's, it's pretty easy for him to get up on that. The other one was more of a challenge. But... Maybe we'll put off, try to put all four feet on this one. Because he'll just walk, he might just walk right up and walk, walk across it. I didn't have to do anything to get this horse to put his front feet on a fairly high step. I basically, I just got up there and walked off it, and he just got right on. It was wonderful. Come here, buddy. So I know he's just going to, he's going to go up there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Let's you get your other foot on there a little better. Come on. Good boy. Okay, relax. Okay. Come on. 
All right, let's uh, see if we'll just go up and over it. Straight into it this time. Who would like to get all four feet on it? Good boy. Good boy. Huh? Good boy. Yes, that was a good effort. So you've all seen horses that you go, you ask the horse to pick up his foot. What you see is this. He picks it up and slams it back down. Then he say, guy says, well, the horse is being stubborn. That's bunk. The horse is trying to get the foot but doesn't trust enough to do it. So when I have a horse that does this, I say, good boy. I reward it. And I let him stand peacefully for 20 seconds. And then I ask, foot. Good boy. Third or fourth, fifth time at the most, that horse picks his foot up and holds it up. I haven't grabbed at the foot. I haven't pushed the horse off weight. I haven't pushed him over to shift his weight over. Nothing. Because I rewarded his effort. That's a real key. Understanding how to reward a horse's effort and to do it. To spot the effort, to be able to see the horse trying to do what you ask, and then reward it. This is something else that we're going to cover over these next few days. He's your horse, and you know him the best, and you've ridden him to uh, some championship stuff. So I'd like you to demonstrate on him some nice riding. I, I know, you know, it's going to look better for if you do it right now because I don't know this horse. I'm happy to do it, but... You going to take the tail bag off? I mean, I, I'm, looking forward, I'm looking forward to riding him, but he's your horse. And before I ride other people's horses, I'd like to see the owner ride the horse to see what they get doing. Well, I wanted to hear. I won't do that. I may want to get on after you ride. <laughs> so you're not going to see her do anything. I can tell that right now. You're barely going to see her move. She might you know, bump one rein a little bit one way or the other, but you're not going to see her do very much at all. He's not a peanut roller, is he? No, good. You know what a peanut roller is? There was a thing in Western Pleasure classes in the States for a while, that, and they were winning. The horses were going with their noses on the ground. It was awful and a very unnatural gait. It was just disgusting. It stopped now. They don't do it anymore. I mean, that's a nice, just a relaxed trot. Three beat gait. Looks like a rocking chair, doesn't it? Gone. 
Not bad for a horse with a broken pelvis. You know, people, when they get into the saddle, it's beautiful, very nice. You know, they, they, especially guys, men, they want it to be exciting. They want to get out and run around and chase something. <laughs> um, you know, in my polo days, I used to like to do the same thing, chase the polo ball and whack it around the field. But... Um, and I don't mind I don't mind going fast on horses at all. That's why I like raining. But I'm also very happy to have a quiet, pleasant ride. You know? Nicely done. So ha have you done any um like to get him to spin at all or anything like that? I'm sorry? There you go. There you go. That's nice. Other way. Can I get on it for a minute? Now, I don't have my boots on. I don't have any spurs on or nothing. Huh? Thank you. That would be nice. I would appreciate that. No. Oh, humane spurs. I've got a pair of equitation spurs. They're just round balls on there. You know? Thank you. Thank you. Yep, that'll do. You want to follow Mama? You want to follow her? You can. Now, you know, I'm not going to get on up here and try to impress you or anything like that. That's not what I'm about. But um, it's just a chance for me to get on and ride a nice horse. <laughs> just the way. You know, there's a lot to horses that you just don't think about. And to their psychology and their natural behavior and natural inclinations that remain a mystery. It's not so much a mystery, we just don't think about it. But I want to encourage you all to start to thinking about horses. It's not just about what the horse can do for you. Uh, Kennedy said, you know, don't ask what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. I like to use horses in that. What can you do for your horse? Consider that, okay? Sure, the horse, these animals give us everything. They give us everything from sometimes food to, uh, you know, be able to have a life because of horses. So, you know, I want to encourage everybody to be their best for their horse, do the best for that horse that they can. Be as kind as you can, be as compassionate as you can. Oh, he's nice. Ooh. I don't want to do that, do him push him into a spin or anything. I don't about his hip, you know, so his pelvis. But he sure is smooth. He's like, Don't run into the camera. Ooh. Ooh. Good boy. Oh, that's okay. I think I quite got that one down. That, but it still backs quite nicely. So, um, boy, he's a jewel. 
is really comfortable. I'm gonna, can I ask him to lope a little bit faster? Huh? I'm sorry? Okay. I get it. Okay, good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> He'll do flying lead change, yeah. I'm sure he will. Yeah. I'm sure he would. Well, I really want to thank you for coming here. I hope that you have enjoyed this little time that we had together and maybe got a little bit of information that's helpful to you. And if it inspired you to think about how better, how much better you could be for your horse, then uh, I think it's been successful. I really appreciate you coming. I hope that some of you will come to the next few days. And then on Monday, Debbie Riley and Carolyn and I will do something called Meeting of Minds, and, uh, which will be a get-together about horses. It's all about horses, gang. That's why you're here. So um, I want to thank you for sticking around. Any comment? Anybody want to say anything at all? Say, oh, this is bunk. I don't believe any of this. You can say it. <laughs>